Harry is preparing for the Invictus Games event in London and wants the royal family to participate so that he can get some free PR and attract more attention. Well, he missed a tsunami of pain that the royal family had to suffer, and also the suspicions about his invisible children, who brazenly, continuously appeared in front of the media. Join us in discussing Traitor Harry and the trick that he and Megan have played in this video. Hello friends, welcome to the King YouTube channel. I think we all realize that the chances of Harry making peace with the royal family are basically zero at this point. So obviously, they don't want to appear in the same place as this traitor Prince Harry. Apologizing to his family for everything he and Meghan have done is the least that Harry can do, but he has no idea apparently about the pain that he has caused his own family. I suspect he just thinks he's being honest with them and he's explaining everything they did wrong in the way that he was raised. And now that he understands his own pain, they're going to love him even more because he's been so honest or whatever. He also blames his father for his mother's passing, aided and abetted by his grandparents and Harry's twisted, disturbed mind. Harry also hates his older brother William because Meghan Markle convinced him that William always got the best of everything and that Harry was unwanted, unloved by the family. And because he's convinced that his father really wanted a girl, not another boy, and definitely not one with red hair, he believes that he was never wanted. Harry just kept on locking himself up in his own delusions, and he has really allowed Megan to make things a lot worse, leaving his soul to be possessed by this she-devil. Jealousy towards his older brother has been fueled by Megan too. Prince William, on the other hand, has an amazing, wonderful, beautiful, kind wife. And Harry cannot admit, even to himself, that at least in the past, Princess Catherine was his ideal mate, the sister he never had. And in Meghan, he thought that he had found her equal. Well, we all know that Meghan Markle's little acting tricks ended about then, and she went back to being the real Meghan after she snagged Harry in her web. While they were visiting Tyler Perry's home, there was a rumor circulating that Harry said that Meghan had undergone a real transformation since the wedding, and that she was no longer the nice, compassionate person she had pretended to be. Is it true? Well, of course, we don't know for sure. But it is a fact that she's not kind, she's not compassionate. I mean, even if she acted that way in the beginning, that was just because she knew she had to trick Harry into marrying her. Harry obviously was too dumb to see what was happening. Meghan probably told him that he needs to speak his truth in the same way that his mother did. Encouraged by his narcissistic wife, Harry's always saying that Diana would be so proud of him and everything he has done to the royal family. That she would be so proud that he's man enough to stand up to everybody and tell them how wronged he was his entire life. Now, Diana did attack her husband publicly, but it was never during the War of the Waleses that she said anything about other members of the family. She didn't say anything bad about the monarchy or the Commonwealth. If she talked about any of these topics, it was with a lot of respect. She always made sure that her boys spent time with the royal family and that they were there at all the important events. She would have been devastated that her boys weren't speaking with each other, and she certainly wouldn't be proud of the way that Harry is conducting himself. I don't care what he or Megan say. Obviously, Harry is completely lacking in self-awareness, and in his opinion, he's right about everything he has done so far, and he seems to believe all he has to do is show up at his father's home, tell him he wants to return, and he wants to bring his family too, and then he can just pick up where he left off with royal duties, and he'll be a totally supported working royal. But only, of course, working at the things that he and Meghan want to do. They don't want to do any of the boring stuff. The Prince and Princess of Wales can handle all those engagements. Well, Harry, you need to give up on this little dream. Now even King Charles is not prepared to put himself out to welcome the traitor. Once Harry did have an open invitation to stay at Clarence House, but obviously now things have changed. He doesn't even get that. And I do wonder what's going to happen if he really comes for the Invictus 10th anniversary. Is he going to face booing by the public? Are the veterans going to boo him? I think it's highly likely. I mean, they don't admire him. And what has he done for them since he left anyway? Harry hasn't organized any fundraisers. He hasn't promoted the games in any way, shape, or form. Instead, he and Megan have used the games as their own personal piggy bank. There are so many stories about how Harry and Meghan have taken money from Invictus and used it for Meghan's wardrobe and their accommodations and other ridiculous expenses. 
According to a leaked document, Harry and Meghan claimed as much as 24% of the budget for the games in Germany. They needed to cover expenses. They needed to pay for Meghan's expensive wardrobe, the travel expenses, the hotels, everything. Once Harry did show a lot of care and empathy and compassion like his mother, but now apparently his life is all about cheap celebrity, making money, milking every situation for his own benefit, he doesn't care about the consequences of his actions. And that just demonstrates that Harry seems to have no concept of how his behavior and his wife's behavior affects other people. His sense of entitlement in everything he does is outstanding. And it is this that carries through into everything he does, everything he says about his previous life. He behaves like a power-hungry abuser. He hurts people, but he believes that everything he does is right. And he's the victim. The whole world is out to get him. Harry's delusions are boundless. It was proven in one of the interviews where he said that neither he nor Megan said the family was racist. What was he talking about? Obviously, Harry has some severe mental health problems, but no, that's not enough to get a pass for everything he's done. Harry was convinced that he and Meghan were the victims, and he's so confused by the level of hurt and resentment that many of his family members and many members of the British public feel as a result of Harry's truth-telling campaign. He just can't get it through that thick skull of his. I mean, he has been convinced by Meghan that only what they perceive as good can come from laying it all out on the table. Harry and Meghan thought they would get so much positive attention, they would have lots of opportunities to talk things out, and they would receive some type of reparations from his father because King Charles would be so desperate to make things right and bring them back into the fold. But instead, all they got was a short little message from the late Queen, recollections may vary, and the financial independence that they said they wanted. And now it looks like Meghan is realizing that she didn't plan things out very well. She didn't fully consider what she was putting out there, and she's become pretty much silent ever since Spare hit shelves. Harry has also tried to take back the accusations of racism within the family. Meghan Markle knows good and well that everything has blown up in their faces, and that's a big reason why she will never come back to the UK. And it looks like Harry's just perplexed about how everything went so wrong. I mean, just wait though, if those children are real, just wait until they grow up. They're gonna be able to tell Harry and Meghan what horrible parents they were. And they're gonna tell Harry that he wasn't a good father because he didn't take them out on any bike rides. He was never around for the birthday parties. They were never allowed to have play dates with their friends. They were never allowed to spend time with family members. And maybe then he will finally realize how awful what he and Meghan have done to the royal family truly is. Now, one of the reasons I've started to suspect that the children are real is that Harry is still hanging around so that he doesn't lose the connection with his kids. Harry has said as much several times, and I suspect the reason that he goes along with this whole facade is the children were not born from Megan's body, and he's worried that if he tells the truth, he'll never see them again, so he feels like he's forced to just go along with Megan's master plan. But I'm still not sure why he even wanted children under these circumstances. I mean, I believe the line of succession BS in this case is all about what Megan wants. Now, okay, being the line of succession, I don't think is really all that important to Harry. At this point, who even knows what the truth is? The Sussex saga has gotten so twisted. We're sick and tired of hearing about them, honestly. I mean, it's always showing up on Google, stuff about their adventures with their parents, and the concern that the parents have over their welfare, and the fact that they're not going to have access to their royal relatives when they're growing up. And at this point in time, we still don't know for sure if they even really exist. Honestly, I'm tired of all the games that Harry and Meghan like to play. Naturally, many people have completely lost respect for the traitors, so of course we're inclined to suspect that the kids are completely made up and that they've just forced this story on the public. The fact is, there has been a whole lot of evidence suggesting that Meghan Markle's pregnancy was not legitimate. Now, in my videos, I talk a lot about this, and we have seen videos of a baby bump swaying side to side as Meghan walks, and we've even seen photos of that moon bump falling down to her knees. So what are we supposed to believe? Meghan's hysterectomy is also something her own father has talked about. So why should we believe that she really was pregnant with Archie and Lily? 
Everything to me is pretty clear. All that's missing now is confirmation. And why would Harry and Meghan orchestrate such a hoax? Now, I remember that Meghan Markle pitched a fit. She even cried on Oprah that Archie was deprived of his birthright as prince because of his black heritage. <laughs> what a made-up story. Of course, that turned out to be a lie. And I don't know if it was a result of Meghan just being careless and not doing her research or if she knew that she was lying. She probably knew. And, you know, Buckingham Palace verified the fact that both children received titles after the death of the late queen. I can imagine Meghan wondering when it was finally going to happen. And I can imagine that big sigh of relief that was heard all over Montecito and the world once the titles were finally publicly announced. I mean, I guess Meghan just requires that assurance that she has contributed biologically to royal children who are listed in the line of succession. And so that means she's a royal, but it doesn't mean she's a royal. She believes that she's now a really important part of royal history, but she's the only person who believes that. There is no way, though, that she's going to give up that without a fight. I mean, these are, after all, royal kids we're discussing, but I see a big problem. For children to be royal, for children to be listed in the line of succession to the British throne, they need to have the DNA of both parents, and they also have to be born of the mother's body. Okay, so Harry is listed as fifth in line to the throne right now, and his alleged children are right below him. What might be something that people don't want to accept is the fact that Harry and Meghan and Harry's children can be regarded as irrelevant, basically. They don't have any real purpose concerning the royal family, because they have moved away, but they're still obsessed with being recognized as royal. Let's compare them to the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh and their kids. They are senior working royals, and it doesn't seem fair that Harry and Meghan's kids hold precedence over the Edinburghs in the line of succession. The Duke is 14th in line, and his children are 15th and 16th respectively in line to the throne. So even though Harry and his kids are higher up in the list, it doesn't mean anything because Harry did nothing to deserve that. He was just born a royal prince. So if you ask me, that's the unfairness that we're seeing. Of course, protocol is not going to be changed, but still, the situation is not fair. If Harry and Meghan had stayed on as senior working royals, then I'm sure people would have accepted them as royals together with the existence of their kids, unless, of course, proven otherwise. Especially considering that the royal family themselves were thrilled for the couple when Meghan first announced her pregnancy with Archie at Eugenie's wedding. Now, that was a really tacky move, but whatever, we're not going to get into that right now. But it wasn't until later that really doubt started to surface, and the royals started to have their own doubts. Something was just weird about the whole story. There were claims made by Meghan and Harry's spokesperson that the Sussex children are well, that they're happy, and they really miss their royal cousins because of the unfortunate alienation from the royal family. And then there's also the worry over their safety. Well, there is still worry that these children don't exist at all. People have a hard time accepting the idea that these kids are real. It doesn't matter how convincing the stories try to be. So what it all boils down to is the idea if the children are real, but they're breaking the rules of the letters patent being the line of succession, then we do have a problem. I mean, in that case, they just need to be removed from the line of succession. And it's not really our business to question their existence or anything else related to them. The problem is that they're listed in the line of succession. Now, the public doesn't have any right to interfere if they're removed. I mean, they have no right to talk about the existence of children of celebrities, for example. Nobody really cares at the end of the day. But if Harry and Meghan insist on those children being listed in the line of succession, then people are going to continue to question why Harry and Meghan cannot prove that the kids exist. It's such a basic question. Well, the answer is probably because they don't, at least not in the way that Harry and Meghan claim. So until the situation further spirals out of control, until something else happens, people are going to continue to doubt the existence of Harry and Meghan's children. It seems like they're really just playing games with the public for their own fun. Nobody would care if there wasn't any power associated with being a king or queen. And even though there's only a slim chance, still, being relatively close to the top of the line of succession, it's not a game. It's like Meghan Markle's fake mocking curtsy. It is not a joke to Brits. It is their arrogance in treating the public like a bunch of idiots that people are so bothered by. 
So apparently the whole Sussex family has been invited to come to Nigeria, but guess who's not going to be coming along? Well, of course, the kids. Harry and Meghan never take those kids anywhere, and that's not normal. Even A-list celebrities and proper royals take their children out sometimes in public. If those children exist, then how sad must they be? I mean, they're probably wondering who their parents even are. And of course, they always trot out the excuse that they need to protect the children's privacy, and they're so worried about their security. But that's not a good excuse. People are still having doubts. I mean, the kids need to go out. They need to be around other people. They need to go outside and play. Instead, they just have to live in that Montecito McMansion all the time. They don't have their parents there with them. They don't get to have the love of extended family members. The only person I think they know is Doria and the nannies. Why can't they take them to a market, for example? Why can't they take them to watch a polo game? Why don't we ever hear stories about what they do at preschool? Eventually, the children are going to have to enroll in school. And when this happens, Harry and Meghan's actions are going to be exposed. I'm guessing their actions to get them listed in the line of succession are going to be proven to be fraudulent. And then the royal family will be in a very difficult position. They'll have to investigate everything that happened, and they're going to have to do the right thing. The car park will certainly have dug a very deep hole for themselves, but it looks like they just continue to dig deeper. Megan, though, will do anything to acquire fame and money for herself, including selling some jam and dog food. Does anybody, though, believe that this narcissistic witch would have missed out on an opportunity to use those kids to sell stuff? I mean, come on. Megan never told us anything about her pregnancy. She never talks about raising small children. She never posed naked with her arms around her pregnant belly, and you know she would have done that if she could have. So, of course, I think we have a right to be suspicious, especially when Harry and Meghan have revealed who they really are. They're incredibly deceitful, so why could anybody trust them? Harry and Meghan do everything they can to trash the royals to try to hurt the reputation of Harry's family. If they don't get what they want, then they make it clear that they're going to destroy anything that stands in their way. Well, if you ask me, the Sussexes set themselves up for ridicule, trying to destroy the credibility of the royal family. Everybody knows there's no family on this planet that is perfect. We all have our problems. But how Harry and Meghan try to deal with their problems by publicly trashing the family, it's unacceptable. These are values that are important to people. We care about togetherness. We care about supporting our family members. We care about appreciation and love. But they don't care about any of that. They just think it's so important for them to get the last word. They've cut ties with the family, and they really only talk about the negative aspects. One thing it seems like they didn't count on, though, was how much respect people had and continue to have for the late queen. I mean, she went through a lot, and she was described as heartbroken after her beloved husband passed away. I'm sure she suffered a lot when she was diagnosed with cancer, too. But still, Harry and Meghan tortured her in her final months and years. They are such nasty people. Now, to me, the royal family, they look like a family who experiences their personal difficulties. Of course, they've got their ups and downs like any other family. But still, they try to maintain their dignity. They try to maintain their honesty. They try to treat each other well. And they always try to present a united front. If Meghan and Harry had just respected these values, then nobody would have been so upset. Nobody would have acted out with the outrage that is now bothering Harry and Meghan so much, apparently. I mean, of course people were offended. I mean, Harry and Meghan have threatened our basic standards of decency. People are asking themselves, who do they think they are? Why are they trying to destroy what we consider to be so important in our lives and on a world platform? And, you know, people explain themselves in their way, just like Harry and Meghan did on Oprah. Some people are louder than other people are, and some get downright nasty. But, really, at the end of the day, they all share the same sense of anger. I don't think any of us would say that we like liars and thieves. It's really not that complicated. And it looks like Harry and Meghan continue to try to make a career out of trashing the royal family. They need to find another line of work, if you ask me. Neither of them is in a position to help anybody with this word salad. It's all just a bunch of noise. For me, the two things I cannot seem to forget are the hypocrisy and all the lies. To me, it's clear that Harry and Meghan relied on the fact that the royal family wouldn't speak out, that they would just maintain a stiff upper lip, 
And so Harry and Meghan would just be able to continue lying as much as they wanted to. And somehow the lies get more and more insane. It's so clear to me when they make some announcement or whatever at the same time the royal family does something that they're trying to overshadow them. Well, so much for the privacy they claim they wanted. I mean, it's important for everybody to remember when Harry complains about the fact that he wants to come home more and he wants to see his beloved family. Remember that phone video of him grinning and talking about his freedom flight. Or what about the Oprah Winfrey interview the two of them did when his grandfather lay dying in the hospital? And probably Her Late Majesty the Queen was already undergoing treatment for her cancer. Or what about that horrible Netflix series, and especially the mock curtsy and that awful smirk on Meghan's face? I think if we all worked together and put our lists together, we would find so many examples of the horrible things Harry and Meghan have done and said about the royal family, especially about William, about Catherine, and Queen Camilla. I hope that Harry finally loses his last appeal. I mean, I'm talking about the lawsuit for the security protection he says he needs because he's so important. Obviously, he's not. It's time for him to give that up. And I hope the courts require Harry to pay every cent that the taxpayers had to spend on all these cases. I hope Meghan never comes to England again. And I hope the truth comes out about her bullying. Even though it does take some time, eventually Harry and Meghan are going to pay the price for everything they have done. Karma is going to come for the two of them. And life is going to move on. Interest in Meghan and Harry is going to fade. Eventually, Harry is going to wake up and he'll see the mess that he has landed himself in, but it's too late. Eventually, the invisible children are going to come out of hiding and will finally find out the truth about them. And eventually, Meghan Markle is going to realize that getting involved with Harry was a big mistake. That brings us to the end of this video. And you, what do you think about the Sussexes and their behavior? Please discuss this with us by commenting, and if you agree with my opinion, please leave a comment, but if not, please express your opinion so that we can better understand your viewpoint. Don't forget to like and share this video, your support is our motivation. And don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications about the newest videos. We'll be back soon, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.